yeah six yeah for the tibia also we use uh, six mm the re the how do you decide the size of the pin is uh, a, a rule by a chap who is very very old in in external fixation chap called fred behrens who described a rule of one third and that rule states that as long as your diameter that you of the implant that you put in is less than one third uh, the, there is no risk of a stress fracture that's the reason why we put in a certain size you know why 6 mm why not 7 mm 7 mm will make it even stronger but as long as you are less than one third the size you don't have a risk of um, stress fracture so most if you remember your your diameters are around 20 you know 24 25 is what you would use in terms of length of screws so that's the diameter of your bone so 6 is well within that range Yes. Yes. Uh, they say that there should be an angle for additional stability, rather than uh, putting the pins perpendicular to the shaft. That is not for one particular. When when you are putting in two pins and each pin is at a different angle, that improves your stability. If all your pins are at an angle to the shaft and parallel to each other, then it doesn't matter. But that, so if you are going to do um, you know a, a unilateral kind of fixator. then that would improve the pull out strength it doesn't improve the stability of the construct on the whole it improves the pull out strength of each individual uh, pin and that becomes more important when you are doing a smooth wire fixator like the jess or the umex where there is no thread to hold it so if if you put in two wires like this then the pull out strength of these two wires together because they are angled to each other is better they should be closer to the fracture site the angled ones no each, all of them would be sort of angled to each other all all of them what that, the one which is closer to the fracture that is a, uh, what is that called somebody has described it's called a steerage pin the pin which is closest and oblique to the fracture but that's in relation to your standard fixators so any role of preloading like axial preload or radial preload okay <coughs> preloading is uh, like like your um, trousers bottom in 1960s it was very very narrow then the style changed it became bell bottoms um, then it came to normal again and now again it's coming some some are starting with bell bottoms preloading now i don't think is really a, a thing that is practiced <laughs> it started with preloading them onto one side what that what preloading does is <clears throat> it was supposed to stiffen it in one direction and therefore reduce the chance of it moving we achieve that by using a thick pin the problem with pre stressing is if you pre stress it too much then you are loading this side of the pin bone interface and that can then with due to pressure it can get necrosed once it get gets necrosed then you have empty sort of area there and your pre stress has gone away so this kind of pre stressing was was sort of is not practiced uh, with with standard fixators at least with the jess and all it is it is still but this is a you know how much to pre stress there is no guidance on that the second thing was axial preload under drill and stuff in a thick pin into that there also now instead of overloading on one side you have the risk of overloading on all sides and that can also give you uh, trouble so those are the two ways of preloading i personally don't follow um, either of them neither do i think that they are grossly um, sort of championed now as they used to be championed um, earlier people who have learnt it that way maybe they they practice that but it's not something that needs to be done with the thicker pins that we are talking about you don't need that um, preloading preloading is to stress it in one direction so that deflection of the pin is reduced with a thick pin that deflection is not there the modularity of the external fixator has it got any effect on the union like one 
uh, in a proximal fragment one rod in distal fragment one rod and a connecting rod and some prefer and just a single rod does it has got some effect on the bone union Where, wherever you have mobility you will have less stability so if you are adding one connector there and that connector is really tight then it probably will not have a difference but if that connector were to loosen then potentially that would have a problem so a single rod is preferable if you can to a sort of jointed thing but a jointed connection has got the advantage of adjustability so these are opposite sides which you have to balance coming yeah. to coming to the concept of preloading again yes compression of the two wires may not offer a good uh, preloading but uh, even today when you are fixing a uh, metaphysical uh, pin earlier uh, pins with wide thread were coming but that is no more the case now they give emphasis on the radial preload with large pin shallow threads radial preload with a large pin and shallow threads yeah but preload comes not fr from the thread design preload comes from what diameter pilot hole you have made that's what precisely i am talking yeah. earlier there were large thread diameters were coming the emphasis was on the holding power of this thread yes now the it is found that superiority is in the uh, core diameter now larger pin are coming with a very shallow thread diameters true so now the concept is radial preloading is superior no, you are still not Better. correct you are you are still not correct you are you are confusing the issue thread is related to pull out strength and strength is related to core diameter so if you say preload if you say radial preload it means drilling with a 3.2 drill bit and having a core diameter of let's say 4 then you are radially preloading it if you drill with a 4 mm drill bit and put in a 4 mm core diameter that is not radial preload as what we do with lock plates today lock plates you, the proper lock plates don't have a large thread they got a very fine thread as you say and the reason is exactly what you pointed out but for that we have to drill with the drill bit which is the right size so we are not looking at um, radial preload lock plates rely on the sort of configuration of the screws which cases do you advise to docking and uh, what is the safe limit? almost almost every case where it is feasible uh, i advise what is that? but the i would say the safe limit is maybe around 5 cm or so so when you do 6 mm pre drilling uh, yeah would you like to preload or you uh, don't advocate radial preload so you drill with 6 mm drill bit and then put no, no, 6 no, no, mm no 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 the, the shaft i'll come to that when i talk of the this thing the core diameter of that is uh, 4.8 so we drill with a uh, 4.8 and uh, it it comes to um, a core diameter of 5 so there is an inbuilt preload if you want to call it like that so we don't do any um, axial preloading. So when the six mm is the shaft diameter, not the thread diameter. When I show you the instruments, I'll tell you. Yeah. So uh, what are the criteria you follow to remove the fixator following a distraction stereogenesis? Bone has to be um, solid on three cortices. Should be absolutely continuous. Patient should be able to weight bear with the fixator loosened. And then uh, only we take off the fixator. What is uh, the time frame of which uh, you achieved in your cases? Uh, say maybe you lengthened it by five centimeters or six. You uh, on, on an average on an average uh, the uh, we say about a minimum of one month per centimeter. Uh, 